Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to hair in Redshift and Cinema 4D today. I've been procrastinating this one for too long. Time to get this one off the ground and running. This is going to be kind of a mini series on hair. It's not incredibly straightforward hair with Redshift and Cinema 4D. This video is going to be for super basic. It's going to be for beginners and how to explore the hair node system. It's not very streamlined yet. Maxon will probably amend this in the future to be more streamlined. Let's get started with what we have. A couple of things to note. If you are using older versions of Redshift, there is a shader called Redshift Hair, RS Hair. That is now depreciated, meaning it does not work anymore with the newer versions of Redshift. It works, but it's a depreciated node. The up-to-date shader to use with hair is principled hair but we will get into that in a moment the first thing we want to do is press shift c and type in sphere make this a primitive make sure your render is set to redshift of course have our sphere selected press shift c again and type in hair and you will see these guides have been generated on our sphere okay let's go back here it's important to note if we go to our guides here, you will see the sphere is linked. If we remove that. So if we don't have our sphere selected, let's delete this again, let's show. So if we don't have the sphere selected and we press Shift C and we type in here, nothing is generated on the sphere. So we want to drag our sphere into our link and the guides show up there. Okay, cool. Let's put in a dome light. Uh, I should see again, dome light, go to our assets browser, just type in HDR and just drag in any old HDR. Okay, now just to kind of explain and break things down so far, we have the Cinema 4D hair object, which is linking to our sphere. And it's also using this hair tag in Cinema 4D, which we need to keep. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. You can change the parameters of the properties within this tag to change the look of your hair thickness, your specular, and you can actually change the color also. Let's just turn our render on and you'll see no hair is being generated on our sphere. But if we press play, these guides are dynamic and they represent how the hair is interacting dynamically. Okay, so let's put that back there. And let's bring in our redshift principled hair tag pop it on there nothing is happening why is this go to your render settings and you will see this hair render make sure that is ticked on and our hair should appear now and there you go there is our fuzzball of hair if we open up our principled hair shader in redshift it is using the cinema 4d attributes shader it is converting that into the principal hair tag and outputting it here. That can make things a little bit confusing and it does, to be honest. It can be a bit confusing jumping in between the tag, the shader, the hair object, and you've got to kind of work your head around what system is best for you. You can pretty much use this as it is, but you will need to change some properties in the principal hair tag. Okay, let's play the simulation out here and we will re-render our hair here and you will see it will have fallen. It's not looking terrible, but it's not looking great. Um, we have this nice little whip of hair up here. Okay, so if we go into our principled hair tag here, we're not going to deep dive into these properties. But what you want to do is make sure your albedo mix is up. And that allows you to mix in colors a little bit better. And, um, you know, you have your standard channels here, roughness, IRO, but they act a little bit different with hair. Um, so if you then go to your hair tag here, and this is where it gets a little bit frustrating and confusing. Bring up this blue, actually, let's use a, just a preset. You'll get this blue hair, but go back into your principal to hair shader and turn down your albedo mix and just go straight back to the default that we were presented with. And so this albedo mix allows you to kind of just change the amount of color that you're inputting 
from this hair tag here. The other thing you could do, let's just delete this. I wouldn't recommend this necessarily as the only way to uh, create hair in Cinema. But if we delete this, we don't actually necessarily need to be using the colors from here. I would keep this hair tag on because you can change things like the thickness. So if we put that to two, the hair will become much finer. There is a need to keep some of this and you could change the curvature of the hair, which is handy. Okay, let's just put this to 0.8 now. And then if we bring in a ramp and let's see if this works. Let's bring in some full rainbow colors. I put that into our albedo channel. Nothing is happening and you're like, ah, why? <laughs> so you need a, a shader called hair position. And what that will allow you to do is if you take the out scaler and pipe it in to the alt input, you should now see your rainbow gradient. So this hair position is telling the ramp node where to apply this, these, all these colors on the hair object. Okay, cool. Now we're going to leave it there for the shaders, but there are some notes to do with your render settings, which is important. Okay. So with your render settings, you have a choice to change the sampling from pixel to vertex. Again, we can go into this in later videos. And then you have ability to change some of the parameters around your hair count, your length, um, what objects are rendered using the hair. And you can add some multi-pass channels, which is actually very helpful. So if you want to bring your hair into post and have control over the color um, or, you know, even the reflection or the, the specularity, put your hair in the alpha channel. Amazing control there. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it there um, and we're, we're going to explore different routes you can use, different systems you can use with the principal tag, with the Cinema 4D shader hair tag. Um, but yeah, I hope that clears up some stuff for people if they're just looking to get in and understand how the hair system works in Cinema 4D. We will be coming back with more videos on this and expanding it probably two two more videos are needed because it's quite a deep subject hopefully one hopefully one please comment below is there anything in the hair system you would like me to explore in the next few videos anything that confuses you i know myself i've got confused by hair in of 4 many times you're not alone maybe i'm alone maybe you haven't been confused anyway thank you for watching and goodbye